Okay, well, I'm back at it with the uh, 22RE over here in Toyota pickup land, and I uh, thought I'd just make a quick video here. So I've been driving the truck, and uh, there, there were a few little problems. So I started doing some checking around. Uh, the motor was kind of rough. Seemed like something just wasn't quite right. Uh, so I did a few different things. For one, I um, I blocked off, like I talked about in my other video, I blocked off the uh, idle air control stuff by putting a piece of tape on that little hole. And then I disconnected the, um, the cold air uh, or the cold start uh, injector. Um, <clears throat> some other things I did the other day was I pulled the core, the uh, harness going to each injector, make sure those were all firing. They were. Um, and then for the test drive I did this afternoon, I disabled all the smog stuff. That's the air injection, uh, the air suction system, and then disabled the EGR. And to disable these, on the EGR you just pull this hose off and cap it off. And that, that will disable the EGR system. <clears throat> and then on the on the air suction, you just that this hose here that that runs down to the um, the air suction uh, little valve, you just cap that off. <coughs> um, and so something it just seemed like the motor wasn't running real well. Uh, I had pulled the plugs out. Now this is this is. Uh, these the plugs are in better condition here, but when I had pulled the plugs out before, number one plug was white, which I feel like was indicative of uh, <clears throat> a lean condition. So I thought, hmm, maybe I have like an air leak somewhere. These look pretty decent uh, right now. Uh, so I think I uh, solved my air leak problem. And, and what it was, and this kind of illustrates how just something very minor, can be causing your motor to, to run rough or, or not be, you know, running the way it should. If you look carefully, <clears throat> I have these wire ties here, and I, I decided I would get tricky, and I if you go back and look at some of my old videos, you'll see that I used those, those nylon wire ties both here and here. And <clears throat> they were loose, but I felt like I was getting a good enough seal. I think what was actually happening in my case that was causing the motor to kind of run a little bit rough and not really seem like it was doing its thing was I think I was getting actually a small amount of what's known as unmetered air into the engine. And so normally the air comes in through here, goes down into the air box, up through the filter and through this. Uh, this is a an air it's not a mass airflow sensor but it's kind of similar it's it's got like a little door in there and it is a, a, a an air uh meter basically so the more air that flows through the more this the little door opens and so this is basically responsible right here for telling the computer like hey buddy this is how much air is coming in so if you get air being sucked in downstream of that and I think this was my culprit here, air is getting in that the computer doesn't expect there, expect to be in the system, you know? And so I think that was what was happening in my case, was I was getting, let me fix that note guy there. <clears throat> I was getting unmetered air because as soon as I cut off the, uh, the little wire ties and I put actual clamps that cinch down real hard, both here and here, suddenly the, the engine seemed to, be running a little bit smoother. Now, I also, <coughs> excuse me, I also, because the motor was running a little rough, I was also a little bit concerned that I might, somebody before me who, who put this motor in might have been mucking around with this uh, cam chain and may have got a tooth off. And I also wanted to verify my, my, um, valve adjustment and I'll, I'll talk about the valve adjustment first so in the shop manual uh, Toyota recommends that you set the intakes to 8,000 clearance and the exhaust to 12,000 clearance cold and I did that 
when the motor was ice cold, I opened it up and I, I set the, the, the clearance on the rocker arms there. And what, 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 you're, what, what they're talking about is, they're talking about the clearance here. You can see if you take a feeler gauge and you stick it in underneath the rocker arm and on top of the valve, uh, whatever they got going on, it's probably the top of the valve stem. It looks like there's some keepers right there. They, on the exhaust side, they want 12 thousandths. So what's interesting is Toyota recommends setting them when the motor's cold. But if you look at um, LC Engineering, they actually recommend setting them hot to the exact same specifications. So it, it, it produces kind of a predicament. Who's, you know, who's right and who's wrong? Well, I am going to go with LCE. As big a fan as I am of Toyota, um, I, you know, I think the guys over at LC Engineering probably have, you know, more first-hand high-performance experience. So if they say, you know, set the valves clearance to eight thousandths of an inch on the intake and twelve thousandths of an inch on the exhaust, but do it when the motor's hot. That carries a lot of weight with me because those guys really seem to know their business. And especially Tony over at LC, he's uh, super helpful, super duper helpful. And um, so if they're, if they're saying set the clearance hot, <coughs> excuse me, um, that, like I said, that, that kind of carries a lot of uh, influence. It also makes a lot of sense to me because, you know, what we're concerned with here is the clearance you have when the motor is functioning or operational. So the interesting thing is that uh, I set it originally cold um, and I just went back and I, I drove the car for about 30 minutes, brought it in, pulled the valve cover off and quickly checked. And one of my exhaust valves was way below the 12,000s. It was probably about, I didn't measure it exactly, but I, I would say it's probably a good 3,000s off. So that might have been contributing to some of my, my uh, unsteady kind of idling situation. We'll know soon enough. Now, the other thing I wanted to touch upon is how do you figure out if you've got the right cam timing? Well, you can look around, watch all kinds of videos and stuff, but it's actually pretty straightforward. So if you look down there, you can see my timing mark. So I have the motor at top dead center. And uh, I ju you just use a 19 millimeter wrench to turn the motor over to where you want it. You do have to keep in mind that that top dead center mark comes up twice. It comes up once on the uh, compression stroke, and then I guess it comes up on the, I suppose it would be the exhaust stroke. The way you differentiate the two is this. First of all, you want to make sure that, and it's kind of hard to see, but you want to make sure that your piston is up there at top dead center. So that's one thing. The best way is you want to look at these lobes on the cam and you want to see that that you're riding on the on the not the not the lobe side you know like over there there's no lift going on. The exhaust and the intake on the on the combustion stroke or the compression stroke should both obviously be closed so you know you can't have if these things are riding up and pushing the valve down obviously we're not on the you know everything's getting compressed in com compressed in the cylinder stroke so that's how you you know kind of differentiate uh, where you're at with top dead center you know are you 360 degrees wrong or are you zero degrees you know exactly right and then so once you <clears throat> once you kind of establish that you are in fact at top dead center on cylinder number one and you don't have your valves open then you can can look at the cam gear now if you look the way you do this is you look right there see that see that dowel that should be at the 12 o'clock position and then you see the little divots in the gear itself Okay, those, sometimes people get confused and think that, oh, well, those little 
dots on top should be straight up and down at 12 o'clock. No. This little guy right there should be at 12 o'clock. These guys actually hang out more like at 11.30 or something, 11.45. And those dots have more to do with when you put together your uh, with, when you put together your timing chain, you, you know, they line up uh, the dots here with the links. So if you're trying to check to see if your cam uh, is gear is in the right position, you basically go by that big dowel, uh, this guy down here, not so much by those. So when the crank is at top dead center, you want that dowel to be uh, pointing straight up and down. And there's also a little, I think it's this guy here, there's a little arrow right here. I guess that's kind of to show you, you know, make sure everything's in line in the center. And so that's kind of, you know, how you can verify that your, that your cam gear is not, you know, skipped a tooth or anything crazy like that. Now, if you put it at top dead center and those little divots in uh, up there between the two uh, large holes are exactly facing, you know, at 12. And the dowel down here is kicked off over there. Then you, then you might be off a tooth. The other thing to do when you're in the motor here, and let me see if I can kind of hold my flashlight with one hand. The other thing you want to do, and you can see on my motor, I've got the plastic guides, but you reach down here and you want to make sure that they are still connected with that little, I don't know if you can see it back there. Let me see if I can get, see, <clears throat> see that little bolt down there? A lot of times they break, the little guide on this side gets slapped so hard that it breaks right there at that bolt. So you kind of want to, you know, check. They do make, they do make metal guides. Uh, LCE also sells a double roller chain. Um, I don't have it on this motor. I was going to do it, but I don't have it uh, installed because I'll probably, I'm probably i going to probably pull this motor out and put a 3RZ in at some point. So I'm just trying to baby this motor as much as I can, you know, to, to get me down the road uh, for a few more years. But uh, when you've got this open, or if you, if you have this open, you definitely want to check and see if those guides uh, down there, especially the one on the driver's side, is, are flopping all around or come loose or anything like that. So that's a few things to check. So, all right, well, uh, like I say, I'm just verifying my uh, valve adjustment when it's hot versus when it's cold and uh, making sure the head bolts are torqued down to 58 foot pounds and all that. So I thought I'd grab the camera and kind of give you guys a little bit of a tour. Overall, things are coming along with the truck. I uh, swapped around my exhaust a little bit and um, went uh, went for a few test drives. I uh, I put a let me see if I can see if you can see it. Let me let me go around to the other side here. I put on a oh yeah here it is. So I I put on a glass pack here in the back, and it was way letting way too much noise come through. So I went back to my trusty full-size kind of, not a muffler, it's just a super large glass pack, more or less, you know. And there's a little bit of a curve in there from the inlet to the outlet, which I think knocks some of the sound waves off. So I ended up going back to that. <clears throat> also in the other video, I was showing the, uh, I was showing the uh, flange. I ended up having to put another clamp at the header and I put a little piece of copper uh, shim stock in there just to kind of tighten everything up. So that's, that's, uh, seems to be working a little bit better. And I think that's probably about it. Like I say, I think I was having a problem with unmetered air coming in. So now that that's done and now that the valves are adjusted, I'm going to take the truck for another test drive and hopefully it'll be a little bit more smooth. But even just fixing those two guys made a noticeable difference. I am chasing down some vibrations, but I'm starting to think probably it's going to be mainly my my home balance job on the wheels and tires, so that's going to have to be a, another project here. So, 
All right, well, we'll leave it there. Hope you've enjoyed the video. And uh, if you're working on your valve train or, you know, worried that your cam gear is off, uh, maybe this will give you kind of a little bit of a roadmap to uh, check and see how things are doing. So, all right, as always, feel free to use the comment section below. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. And uh, if you find this video uh, helpful, click the like, like button. That definitely always helps uh, the channel out. All right, thanks very much for watching.